This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. All right, in this one, we're going to use Photoshop to actually add some detail to the diffuse image map. So in order to understand in Photoshop where exactly to align any of our image, we need to reapply the UVW unwrap modifier. So the unwrap modifier, now if I just go into the UV editor here, I can see what's going on. Uh, it's a little easier to see once we turn the checkerboard off. So I just need basically a copy of this in order to understand what I'm doing in Photoshop. So under tools, we go to render UVW template. And this width and height is basically the dimension of the image that's going to be rendered out. 1024 by 1024 for what we need is just fine. You can pretty much set this to whatever you want. This could be 10,000 by 10,000. You get a real high res image. So we're going to hit render UV template. And then the image that's generated here is at one to two. So right now it's scaled down. So if we just roll the wheel on the mouse to zoom in a little bit, we now see it's at one to one and the quality of those lines is just fine. So if I hit the save icon, so that disk icon is save, we're going to save this as robot body template dot JPEG. 100% quality and OK. So now we can close all this stuff and then switch over to Photoshop. So now in Photoshop, we're just going to go File, and I have used these recently. So I'm going to open up the Infinite Skills logo and also the robot body. So once I've got these two images separated here in Photoshop, all I need to do is with the logo here in the foreground, I'm going to use my move tool and I'm just going to drag the logo either from here or from here into this other document. Once it's dropped in the other document, it comes in as a new layer. I can close the logo image. So now I've got it down here in its own layer. So we're going to put this on the front of the body. Control plus and control minus, zoom in and zoom out. And then the space bar is the pan hand. So when I hit the space bar, it switches to a hand and I can just grab and drag my image around screen. Now, layer one is the active layer. It's highlighted blue here in the layers palette. So I know it's the active layer. So I'm gonna to go to my edit menu and either use the transform rotate, or I can rotate and I know if I know exactly what direction I wanna rotate it, rotate 90 degrees works. But I wanna scale it a little bit also. So we'll go back to our transform. I have scale, rotate, skew, distort, and other transform tools. A lot of those tools are built into the free transform tool. So I generally use the free transform because it's a quick shortcut. So when I have whatever my foreground layer is, we just hit control T and then we've got the ability to transform this. As I'm scaling, if I hold down the shift key and I'm dragging from a corner, I can maintain the correct proportions or the correct aspect ratio of that image. So as I scale it, it'll stay uniform in both dimensions. So when we get that sized about where we want it, we'll let it go. And then we can center it where we want. Now the rotate is also built in here. So if I move outside the corner and use my rotate tool, I can rotate it wherever I want. Now I actually don't want to rotate this. We're going to set it back to zero there. But I can grab and I can move it around. If I grab on a single edge, I can scale in one dimension. Now here holding on the shift key won't change anything because I'm actually scaling in one dimension very literally. So we'll undo that, control Z. It's nice you have the same dimensions there. And again, if I hold down shift as I scale from a corner, I can maintain proportions. So we'll set that where we want it. Once we like how this is sized, we can either hit the check mark or we double click inside the region to set the transform. Now, as you can see in the logo itself, there should be three rounded corners and one square corner. I have two options here. I can either use the eraser tool and directly erase those, but if I make a mistake, I have to undo. That's actually a destructive way of editing where once we erase that, we really don't have the information available to us anymore if we want to change anything. The non-destructive way to edit this is to use the mask tool. So when I add an opacity mask to this layer, I can now paint on the opacity mask with black and white or variations of gray to control what areas of that layer are visible or not visible. 
Now, the non-destructive part of this is that if I choose to actually bring that information back, I can just swap my foreground background color so I have white now in the foreground. And I can paint back over that with white to bring that part of the image back. Now, we're going to zoom in a little bit there, so control plus a couple of times. And we're going to grab that and drag it over to the center. Now, I'm going to go back to black as my foreground color. We're going to adjust the brush size a little bit here. So if I click on the brush drop down arrow, I can change the size and the hardness. Now the hardness is 100%, that's good. So we're going to drop the size down a little bit. Take a look, and eh, that looks better. I can also change the size of my brush using the bracket keys. So as I use the two bracket keys, I can interactively adjust the size of that brush to control it how I want. Now again, the nice thing about non-destructive editing here is that if I make a mistake, oops, I can switch back to my foreground color and I can just paint that back in. So we went a little far with this one. Now, if you've got a Wacom tablet, um, a lot of this kind of editing is a lot smoother and easier when you're actually dealing with a stylus in your hand that feels you know, more like a paintbrush. So working with the mouse is a little more tedious. It's definitely doable, but the stylus was just a lot cleaner and easier to use. All right, so we zoom back out. That looks pretty good there. I like the size of it. We're gonna go click back on our background layer because I'm gonna add a new layer and I want that layer to be underneath here. So when I add a new layer, it always gets added above the currently selected layer. So we're gonna new layer. Now layer two, I just wanna basically fill with black. So I'm gonna go edit fill. And then we're going to change our contents, our use, to black. All right, so I hit OK, and it just blacks everything out. Now, in order to kind of control exactly where I'm going to paint on the next layer, I'm going to take layer two and I'm going to adjust its opacity. So this is a temporary fix here, so I can see through to where I want to paint a little bit of my dirt and scratch layer. So I'm going to go back to my brush, and on layer three now, I'm going to open up some of my brush presets. So I'm going to go to Window brush presets and we're going to look through here and we're going to see if there's any kind of kind of good dirt brushes that we can use. Oh, that one looks pretty good. So now as I brush over my image, let's get those out of the way a little. Zoom out and we're going to use the bracket key to scale that down a little bit. Now I also want to make sure that my opacity for now is at 100. So as I brush over this, using the wrong foreground color. So I just use black as my foreground color. So we're gonna to switch to white. As I brush over that, let's zoom back in. It's a little bit dense. It's a little bit it's more solid than what I want. So we're gonna hit Control Z to undo. And we're gonna look back. Okay, size there, shape dynamics, and we're gonna look at scattering. So if we turn scattering on, we're gonna basically break up a little bit more. So if I scattered a little bit more, See, it basically gets a little bit less dense in there. Now when I go to paint, it looks a little bit better. All right, so let's undo. Move this back out of the way. And now knowing, okay, this is his back, this is his front, and the arms are going to be hooked in here somewhere. The legs are going to be in down here. It's through the center of the body. Now, I'm not thinking about any of this as kind of finished work. So after we do this, we're going to want to go in, this is the top and bottom. So we're just going to add some kind of random kind of mess here to make it look like he's a little bit beat up. And then we're going to go to our smudge tool with a much larger brush. And we're going to start smudging some of this out. So one of the things that I'm really looking for is to just make everything look very random and not completely controlled. So once I have something that I like here, we're going to go back to that brush and with a much lower opacity, we're going to add a little bit more detail back in there. Then we can still go back to the layer, let's close some of this, and adjust the opacity of the layer itself. So we can bring that down 
so that all those smudge marks are not nearly as noticeable. Now if we bring layer 2's opacity back up so we don't see through, we'll see really the kind of quality that's happening in our layer. So I can always add another layer. We can change the color here, give them some red. So I want to start adding some other colors here, but I want to be pretty sparingly, or add them pretty sparingly. So let's get rid of that. We're going to make the brush a bit smaller. And then we'll go add some more color. So let's try a little bit of green in here. A little blue. So since our characters in the end here are going to end up in a crayon battle, I kind of want the robot to look like he's been in this battle before. So we'll take the layer opacity of that one down a little bit as well, so that there's some color, but we don't want it real apparent. It just starts to look kind of fake. All right, so then we'll go back and we'll smudge some of those colors a bit. All right, once I'm happy with this, and we'll go back and we'll actually bring this layer paste it down a little bit more on the white smudge. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I want to save this image. So I'm going to start out by hitting Save As, and we're going to save it as a PSD. So Photoshop's native file format, which keeps all my layers intact. So if I want to, I can actually come back and make changes. So let's save. And then we're going to go to Save As. And we're going to end up calling this robot body, and I'm going to make underscore diffuse because the color part of the image is actually the diffuse layer. And we're going to save it as a JPEG. Best quality. All right, now when we jump back into 3ds Max, I can apply that material to my robot. So we're going to go to the material editor, and we're going to make some adjustments here to what we've got going on for our robot. So we're going to disconnect the old material. I'm going to get these out of the way a bit. And we're going to add in a new plastic material. So we like that fine textured black. So we're going to wire that into channel 1 so that that is now on the main part of the robot's body. Now we're going to add in a new bitmap. And we're going to grab that paint layer that we just made, robot body diffuse, and we're going to drag that into the color map for our plastic. So right now, it's set to use color, we're going to set to use map. So now it's going to use that diffuse JPEG. We can tell that to show on our viewport, so then we can see it on his body and exactly where it is. So now we see he's got our logo, and if we render, you should have some of those little beat up colors on them as well. Now, we may need to go back and actually make some adjustments to this and tone it down a bit. Also, if we go back to our material here, this bitmap on here for his bump maps is not actually the one we want to use. So we're going to delete that, and we can also delete that because we're not using the relief image. This noise is the one we want to use as his bump image. All right, it's a much smaller map, and if we look here, We've got an unwrap on him, so that's controlling the size. So the bump map then is going to be a lot smaller on him and be a much finer kind of bump that looks way better in the finished image here. All right, so now we no longer notice any of those seams in there. We're getting a nice glow. Everything looks good. All right, 